Hello everyone, I'm Matthew and I'm here to tell you about the arterial supply of the foregut. So the foregut is a part of the gut that includes the distal esophagus, stomach, proximal duodenum, liver, bile system and the pancreas. To start off with, here's a simple drawing of the body and its major arteries. So we're interested in the abdominal aorta, which has three unpaired branches, the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. And we're looking today at the celiac trunk, which you can find in that yellow circle there. So when the abdomen is opened, we can see various foregut structures, most strikingly the liver, which I've just drawn, and the gallbladder poking out underneath. We can also see the stomach. But in order to see any more, I'm going to have to remove the liver. And we'll get to that in just a little second. Some nice colouring in. Okay, so now we've removed the liver, and we can clearly see the stomach, the duodenum, and we're also going to see the little pancreas, which is actually behind the stomach, and it's tucked into the C-shaped duodenum. And I'm also going to treat you and show you where the spleen is. It's in the left upper quadrant, tucked behind the stomach. Easy. So, let's now have a look at the blood supply to these organs. I've removed the liver, and we can see the stomach, the spleen, and the duodenum. The pancreas is posterior to the stomach. So, the diaphragm, the muscle, is here. And emerging from it at T12, from the abdominal aorta, at the aortic hiatus, is the celiac trunk. It's the first branch of the abdominal aorta. And it has three branches, the first of which is the left gastric artery. This sends a one branch to the distal esophagus and another down the lesser curvature of the stomach to supply it with the right gastric artery, which we'll see later. So that's the left gastric artery. Done. Woo! The second branch of the celiac axis is the splenic artery. This is retroperitoneal, so it goes behind the stomach and along the top of the pancreas towards the spleen. As it does so, it gives off short gastric arteries which supply the greater curvature and fundus of the stomach. It also gives off posterior gastric arteries to the back of the stomach and will also give off little small branches to the pancreas. Finally, it reaches the spleen, which it supplies very well, and then you can see that it's continuing down the greater curvature of the stomach on the left hand side and this is when it becomes, so right here, all of it is called the splenic artery but it actually finishes as an artery called the left gastroepiploic artery which supplies the greater curvature of the stomach and it does so forming an anastomosis with the right corresponding gastroepiploic artery which we'll see later. So the splenic artery is a very busy artery as we've seen and the trick to identifying it is that it is very wiggly or torturous in appearance. Remember that it gives branches to the stomach, pancreas and spleen and continues as a left gastroepiploic artery which runs between the layers of the greater omentum. Finally, I'd just like to finish by saying the left gastric artery and the left gastroepiploic artery form anastomoses with their equivalent on the right in order to supply the lesser and greater curvatures of the stomach respectively. So we're going to see this now. 